The Jody Arias case stands as one of the most sensational and controversial criminal trials in recent American history. It captured the attention of millions, not just for the brutal nature of the crime, but for the psychological intricacies and media spectacle that surrounded it. The story of Jody Arias and Travis Alexander is one of obsession, betrayal, and ultimately murder, leaving a lasting impact on public consciousness and the legal system. The relationship, a volatile union, Jody Arias and Travis Alexander first met in September 2006 at a prepaid legal services conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. Alexander, a charismatic and successful salesman, was immediately drawn to Arias, who was aspiring to build her own career. The attraction was mutual, and the two quickly began a romantic relationship. However, their relationship was complicated from the start. Alexander was a devout Mormon, and Arias, who was not religious at the time, converted to Mormonism to better align with his values. Despite this, their relationship was marked by deep contrasts. Arias was passionate and intense, while Alexander was more reserved and, according to some, conflicted about their relationship. The couple's relationship was far from stable. They broke up several times, yet they continued to engage in a sexual relationship. Even after officially parting ways, friends of Alexander described Arias as being obsessive and jealous with a tendency to snoop through his personal belongings and become angry if she felt slighted. Despite these warning signs, the two remained entangled in a toxic cycle of attraction and repulsion. The Crime A Grisly Discovery On June 4, 2008, the relationship between Jody Arias and Travis Alexander came to a horrific end. Alexander's body was discovered by friends in his Mesa, Arizona, home five days later. The scene was brutal. Alexander had been stabbed 27 times, his throat was slit from ear to ear, and he had been shot in the head. The crime scene was one of overwhelming violence, suggesting a level of rage and personal vendetta rather than a random act of violence. The investigation quickly led to Arias, who had been in contact with Alexander in the days leading up to his death. Initially, Arias denied being in Mesa at the time of the murder, claiming she had been on a road trip to Utah. However, evidence soon contradicted her alibi. A camera found in Alexander's washing machine contained photos of the two engaging in sexual activities on the day of the murder, as well as images of Alexander's lifeless body. Additionally, Arias's bloody palm print was discovered at the scene, and she had visible cuts on her hands, further implicating her in the crime. The arrest and changing stories, faced with mounting evidence, Arias was arrested in July 2008 and charged with first-degree murder. Her response to the charges would become a critical aspect of the case. Initially, Arias maintained her innocence, claiming she had nothing to do with the crime. However, her story would change multiple times over the course of the investigation and trial, each version more unbelievable than the last. In her first change of story, Arias claimed that two masked intruders had broken into Alexander's home and killed him, sparing her life. She described a harrowing encounter, where she was held at gunpoint and threatened, but ultimately left unharmed. This story, however, was quickly dismissed by investigators due to lack of evidence and inconsistencies in her account. Later, in a dramatic shift during the trial, Arias claimed that she had killed Alexander in self-defense. She alleged that Alexander had been physically abusive throughout their relationship, and that on the day of the murder, he had become enraged and attacked her. Arias claimed that she had no choice but to defend herself, and in the process, Alexander was killed. This narrative would become the focal point of her defense, painting Alexander as a violent and abusive partner. The Trial A Media Circus The trial of Jody Arias began in January 2013 and quickly became a media sensation. The combination of sex, religion, and brutal violence made it a magnet for public attention. The trial was broadcast live, and Arias became a household name as the details of the case were dissected on television, radio, and online platforms. The public was captivated by the case, which seemed to have all the elements of a true crime drama. Arias' defense team sought to portray her as a victim of domestic abuse, arguing that she had acted in self-defense. They presented evidence of Alexander's alleged controlling behavior and introduced explicit text messages and emails to support their claims. The defense also argued that Arias had suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, as a result of the abuse, which had impacted her memory and perception of the events. However, the prosecution painted a very different picture, 
Prosecutor Juan Martinez argued that Arias was a manipulative and jealous ex-girlfriend who had meticulously planned the murder after discovering that Alexander was moving on with his life and possibly seeing other women. Martinez highlighted the premeditated nature of the crime, pointing to the fact that Arias had rented a car, dyed her hair, and brought a gun and knife with her to Alexander's home. One of the most memorable moments of the trial was Arias' testimony, during which she was on the stand for 18 days. Her demeanor, often seen as cold and calculating, did little to garner sympathy from the jury or the public. The contradictions in her stories and her apparent lack of remorse further fueled the belief that she was guilty of premeditated murder. The Verdict in Sentencing After months of testimony and deliberation, the jury found Jody Arias guilty of first-degree murder on May 8, 2013. The trial then moved into the penalty phase, where the jury had to decide whether Arias should receive the death penalty or life in prison. This phase was equally contentious, with emotional testimonies from both sides. During the sentencing phase, Arias gave a plea for her life, stating that she could contribute to society by teaching and creating art in prison. However, the jury was unable to reach a unanimous decision on whether she should be sentenced to death, resulting in a hung jury. A retrial of the penalty phase in 2015 also ended in a hung jury, and as a result, the judge sentenced Arias to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The Aftermath Legacy of a Notorious Case the Jody Arias case has left a lasting impact on both the legal system and popular culture. It raised important questions about the influence of media on criminal trials, as the intense coverage arguably shaped public opinion and the trial's dynamics. The case also sparked discussions about the complexities of domestic violence, mental health, and the motivations behind extreme acts of violence. Arias herself remains a polarizing figure. While some view her as a cold-blooded killer, who manipulated the justice system. Others see her as a woman driven to the edge by an abusive relationship. Regardless of perspective, her case continues to be studied and debated as an example of how toxic relationships can spiral into tragedy. In the years following her conviction, Arias has continued to maintain her innocence, insisting that she acted in self-defense. She has also become a subject of numerous documentaries, books, and television specials, ensuring that her story remains in the public eye. The Jody Arias case is a haunting reminder of the destructive potential of obsession, jealousy, and betrayal. What began as a passionate relationship ended in one of the most brutal murders in recent history, leaving a trail of pain and controversy. Thanks for watching.